Cyclic AMP is a signaling molecule in biological systems. It is produced by adenylate cyclase, an enzyme activated by a G protein during cellular signaling. Because it can interact directly with kinase enzymes, it represents an advanced stage of cellular signaling, typically only a few steps away from the final cellular response is carried out by a phosphorylated protein. The means by which CAMP turns on kinases has been extensively studied and represents a nice example of how substrate binding can remarkably alter the conformation of a protein. Before discussing how CAMP propagates cellular signals, we need to know something about the protein that it acts on, protein kinase A or PKA. PKA is a member of a general class of proteins that phosphorylates or adds a phosphate group to residues on other proteins. Typically, this leads to activation of the phosphorylated protein and the execution of some chemical reaction or structural response. Phosphorylation, therefore, represents a method by which cells can turn on chemical reactions rapidly and controllably. Kinase enzymes are the biomolecules that control cellular responses due to phosphorylation. What then controls kinase enzymes? In the absence of cyclic AMP, PKA is present in the cell in an inactive tetrameric form consisting of two catalytic or C subunits and two regulatory or R subunits. Residues on the R subunits normally block the active sites of the C chains and CAMP is needed to activate the kinase enzyme for phosphorylation. In the presence of high concentrations of CAMP, as during the propagation of an extracellular hormone signal, the catalytic subunits are released from the regulatory subunits and PKA can carry out its function of phosphorylation. CAMP thus acts as a gatekeeper to control the activity of protein kinase A. Detailed studies of the structure of PKA in its inactive form have been carried out. What you're looking at is a crystal structure of an R subunit complexed with a sulfur-containing analog of CAMP, showing the interactions that lead to CAMP binding to the regulatory subunit. As you can see here, the highly conserved phosphate binding cassette, or PBC, binds the phosphodiester portion of this CAMP analog through hydrogen bonds to arginine-209 and alanine-202, and the 2 prime hydroxyl is hydrogen-bound both to glycine-199 and glutamate-200. Interestingly, the 2 prime hydroxyl is acting both as a hydrogen bond donor and acceptor in the PBC. Moving to the other side of the regulatory subunit, we see the same set of residues in a second CAMP binding domain. Hydrophobic interactions, including a key pi stacking interaction with an adenine capping residue, tyrosine 371, serve to bind the heterocyclic portion of CAMP. In fact, mutation of these residues resulted in the need for substantially more CAMP in order to activate PKA, supporting their critical role. Here you can see the structure of an inactive PKA complex containing an R and C subunit. The two CAMP binding domains of the R subunit are highlighted in blue for domain A and orange for domain B. Notice that the key adenine capping residue for domain A, TRIP260, is now 30 angstroms away from the phosphate binding cassette. CAMP binds only very weakly to domain A in this conformation, and a key ionic interaction, or salt bridge, between ARG366 and GLU261 holds the R subunit in this conformation. Previous kinetic data had suggested, and this observation confirms, that CAMP binding to the R subunit takes place in a stepwise fashion. CAMP binds in domain B, a conformational change in the R subunit occurs, then a second molecule of CAMP can bind in a much improved binding site in domain A. Because CAMP binding in domain B pulls the adenine capping residue tier 371 towards the PBC, it likely disrupts the salt bridge, allowing domain A's adenine capping residue to migrate towards its PBC. Binding of CAMP to domain A likely then induces a second conformational change, which leads to release of the C subunit for catalysis. Returning to the crystal structure of the CAMP-bound R subunit, we see that a substantial crimping of the long alpha helix in domain B is present, bringing the two CAMP binding domains into close proximity. This may also pull the N-terminal domain that binds the C subunit, not shown, in towards the binding domains, releasing the C subunit for catalysis. 
Unfortunately, the mechanism of C subunit release has not been studied in detail.